<laughs> so, all right. I want I, I, I want to emphasize this with a disclaimer that this was not good in any way. It went way too long. Let's put it this way. Marks, AEW Marks, I will announce this right now. This match sucked. It was. It was. It, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. Nothing about this was good. I had all the expectations in the world for a five star match. This, and I got. I got a negative two stars. Yeah. This was. This sucked me dry. I was so. I was. I was bored. I think this was the time when I'm like, this is really boring. It was slow. Every, See, everyone agrees. Every, if you look at social media, everyone says every, this everybody match said was awful. Just, everybody, just terrible. everybody said it. Everybody said that this match was boring. It was unnecessarily boring. They're like, oh, this is 1983, um, Greg Valentine, Roddy Piper. This was 30 minutes. That was 16 minutes. If it was that length, I would have been fine. I'm giving this a thumbs down. I'm giving it... I might... Well... I'm not giving it two thumbs down. It wasn't that bad, but I'm gonna give it a thumbs down too. It was. It was just. It just. <sighs> the expectation did not meet what happened. No, and, it just didn't. Uh, and CM Punk won with a. Oh, that was the other thing. They had like thumbtacks and shit. It's not necessary. It's not. And and of course, CM Punk bladed himself like two seconds into. the It was whole not match. necessary. It, you don't have to have that much fucking crimson on your fucking face to have a good match. At I'm least, sorry. at least, at least that early on, it was not necessary. We'll talk about that when we make this shit majestic again. You but know, for I God's sake, hardcore matches. I fucking hate hardcore matches. Right. But it was a dynamite diamond ring shot by CM Punk once again, adding a gimmick to a gimmick for CM Punk to win. It, oh, and Wardlow betrayed MJF. Who the fuck cares? Right. Unfortunately, it's like, okay, they're trying to break out Wardlow, which is fine because I like Wardlow. Well, that's fine, but it's just like, who the fuck cares? It was going to happen. Duh, no shit, Sherlock, right. that was going to happen. Uh, yeah, thumbs down for me. Like, yeah. it, I, I couldn't, I was bored. It this was, was a boring, this, clunky, It was slow, it was slow. Well, because CM Punk lost like half his fucking blood. <laughs> Probably. All right, all right, gallery. Let's make this shit majestic again. I, I think this is the this is the first time I think that we have to make AEW majestic. Where we we actually have a couple of points to talk about and like to really dive deep into it and get into it. So, um, the problem with this match is everything of before it kind of killed the crowd. Now the crowd was getting back into it. Let me let me give you a little bit of context as to where I'm coming in from. So I've watched AEW for a couple of years now. And after a certain point in time, you kind of have an idea as to how these matches work. Like you have an idea of like how certain matches are going to go based on what's been happening, right? Am I right. wrong? No. And... So I think what is really killing me right now is that I'm starting to get to that point in AEW where everything is just becoming predictable. Where, where I kind of know exactly who is going to win what matches at what points in time. Okay, I mean, okay, I, I do understand. I mean, with WWE pay-per-views, I, I'm, I'm like 90% correct as far as like who wins which match because it's so fucking obvious but the problem is is that the predetermined aspect of professional wrestling should not dictate on your perception of the actual thing well it does that's the problem that's your problem well i knew who was going to win enjoy the ride not the <sighs> destiny don't d enjoy the ride not the destination and that's the problem but here. But you see, I think I think at that point, if you kind of know how, I think if you know who wins, you know how the structure of the match is going to go. But once again, even if you know exactly how it's going to go, enjoy the ride. It's, it's, not, like, that, it's, like, it's not that I don't enjoy it. It's just that it's it's so predictable. And here's the thing: that I, it becomes I like, will, okay, well, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. You know it it. I'm going to give you a metaphor that I think will be appropriate for what I'm saying. Look at professional wrestling like going on a roller coaster. 
you know you can visually see what's going to happen mm -hmm. on the roller coaster. You know you're going to start from the gate and you're going to end at the gate. Mm -hmm. The enjoyment comes from going around everything. Mm -hmm. That's what professional wrestling is. Okay. You or look at a play. You know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know how it's going to end. Enjoy the ride. Let's also talk about the fact that the uh, professional wrestling community on the internet is so toxic. Oh, yeah. Uh, people were trying to defend like a lot of different things, which was stupid. All right. But so, anyways, let's talk. Let's, let's eviscerate this show. I know. But, I'm, you know, you, we wanted to start with this preface. But I'm just letting you know. Yeah. Think, so, think, of, think of pro wrestling that way. That's why I think I enjoy pro wrestling more than you do because – I'm, I'm looking at it at that perspective. So when it comes to Adam Cole, I knew that Red Dragon was going to interfere. It was stupid. I wouldn't have had them interfere. Now, if they were going to interfere, I would have had them interfere, right? Whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I would have had them been thrown out instead of instead of the hoggly boosh and them moving tables and all this bullshit right. that they in, did. Instead of instead without, of without the referee doing a damn thing. Oh, I know that was really annoying too. How many times? Did, how many times throughout the show did the referee see something happen and fail to do anything about it? Like, at least five times. Yeah. Easily. So, so these referees are trained by the NFL or something because these people are fucking blind. It's they are so blind. Awful. And uh, unfortunately, that's the kind of stuff that's going to hurt Hangman Page's title run. It's going to hurt AEW yeah. in general. It's going to hurt AEW. It's like you see these guys and you know it's going to be a good match. Have them have a match. Now, in interfe now, in interference, it does I not don't hurt. I need it. Well, it hurt this match. No, it, it hurt it because they did it like three times. Yeah, exactly. Do it once and then be done. And then have Dark Order come out and do their little snafu and then have them fuck off. I would have been okay with it. But not only did they do the interference, but then they also moved the table. And then they also tried to interfere again until Dark Order came out. That's what happened. They interfered three times. Yeah, they did. That's not what you're supposed to do. Right. Exactly. No, because, I agree. Because it made Adam Cole look weak. Yep. It made Adam Page look weak, too. Because, oh, having read Adam Page cannot win a match without his friends helping him out. Right. It's like, no. Can Adam Page not defend himself? Is he not a fighting champion? Right. I mean, I expect that from a chicken shit heel like Roman Reigns, but not from a baby face like Adam. Is, is Adam Page even a baby face at this point? I don't know. I don't know. That's and what that's, is Adam Page, and, and that should not be your perception coming out of a title match like this, right? Where Adam Cole is a clear heel, he is. So having his friends come out and help him, that's perfect. Once, not three times. I know because the referee saw it all three times. Now, if the referee didn't see it, fine. Maybe if they try to help. And or if, they, if, they, if they try right. to help again, but the referee caught on to their shit and then threw them out, cool. And, and I knew that when Red Dragon didn't win the tag team titles, I knew that Adam Adam Cole was not going to win. It can't be that predictable, and that's the problem. Anyway, um, th so that's what I probably would have done. I would have had Red Dragon either th been thrown out the first interference yeah. or them trying to do another one, but the referee catches on right. to their bullshit and then say, you're out of here. And then, and, Adam then, Cole, and then Adam Cole does a low blow or do something kind of right. sneaky. And then, and then well, better and constructed then, match. And then, and then you have, you have um, Dark, Dark Order. Order interfere on the ramp at the stage instead of, at ringside. Right. They're trying to come out, and then right. they come out and do that. Right. Exactly. <sighs> There's a lot I would do to this. Oh, um, my fucking God. This match was terrible. It was. I would have cut it in half by yep. time. Yep. The the should not have been given as much time. Also, CM Punk's blading was way too He early. was. He was gushing. His hair was sticking, and it, it was too early. Here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to say this. Because I think it, I think once again it illustrates oh, my it's point. It's great to have all this blood. No, it was actually kind of gross. The blood to me is fine. It's when you do it is the difference. The CM, 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 CM Punk, Punk lost so much fucking blood in this match. It wasn't. It wasn't even within five minutes, and then CM Punk started bleeding. And that was way too soon. It should be at the very end of the match when somebody starts bleeding. 
But CM Punk lost so much blood that he couldn't keep himself up. Right. That's now, how bad it was. Now, I want, I want to illustrate an example of blading done right <sighs> with another match that AEW had. Blading is so 1980s, too. Right. Now, keep in mind. Now, there is another one where I think blading was done right within this company. And that was, well, number one, the moxley Brian Danielson match. They did it right. But um, let's talk about the Cody-Dustin Rhodes match at the first double or nothing. Right. Now, did Dustin cut himself too deep? Yes. Yes. But it was more towards the end of the match. There was maybe another, what, seven minutes, and then he started gushing blood. But that made sense. Where CM, still... CM, CM Punk did this way too soon, where he was bleeding more than he was not, and that's not what you should do. That's not how it should be. I, I mean, I personally have a moral obligation towards blading. Just in general, because I I don't like the practice of blading. If if you if you want to get cut, you're getting cut the hard way. Right. Exactly. I mean, that's my point. You shouldn't make yourself cut. That's not. There there is a there is a way to there is a hit, better way to do it. There is a way to hit somebody. But but anyways, I have a moral obligation towards blading. And I think I think that you don't have that, a, you don't you don't have a moral obligation. You have a you have a moral issue with it because an obligation means right. that you have so, so like I have, a I have, duty or so, something. Yeah, so I have a moral issue towards blading just in general. I don't I don't I don't see. I mean I understand it. I just don't care. You, you can have a good match without blood. Of course, AEW. This, this, the, this was this was a dog collar match. I know the AEW incels are. They want blood. This is a dog collar match. I so can, they'll never see blood come out of a female in their life. I can under... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there was a lot of thing here. Um, cut it in half. I don't particularly mind the blood. Right. Just do it at the end of the match. I instead know. of instead <laughs> of at the very beginning of the match. Un unless, unless a person is bleeding accidentally, right. then right. cool. Right. Then whatever. Right. right. That th That's different. Ah, uh, again, interferences. The, 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 this the, match. Yep, the interferences ruined this match. Britt Baker is more than capable of taking care of herself. She's a big girl; she can take care of herself. She's a she has a doctorate for God's sake. Like, come on. Um. Well, again, you you just have to have these fucking. Also, also the the orientation of this match was really hurting it because it I was. think this was right after the dog collar match. It was. Yeah, this was right at no. Yes, it was right after the mm -hmm. dog collar match. So it just really hurt because of the orientation of the matches. Yeah, so um, this was kind of a sleeper. This was a sleeper. Yep, this, this was in that, a, a title match should not be a sleeper match. No, it should not. This was awesome. I think this was a perfect placement. It was a good opener. It was, it was bruising, but it wasn't bloody, which I really enjoyed. So you like so because these two definitely had like a blood rivalry. They were like in each other's faces. Mm -hmm. They explained it but really well. But they didn't well. have to bleed in order to tell the story. Now they bruise each other up. Like they're feeling that tomorrow, especially Eddie Kingston. He had a huge bruise on his eye. Now of course, of course, we gotta talk about the fact that there were some pretty dangerous spots in this match too. Literally, the first move with a pay per view was a concussion. Well, he he was not concussed. He no, just it was but, just, it but was just it really was, scary. It was the concussion we need to have. It, it was like Madcap Moss landing on his head, but that right. was a lot scarier. Right, but but you, it was it was pretty scary. Like you knew that there was it was this not this match be off to a good start. This this match set a really high bar for the rest of the it show, did. and I think it kind of spilled into a lot of the other matches mm -hmm. because these two had a really good match. I loved this match. But it just set such a weirdly high expectation. I for liked me. it. I didn't love it. And the only reason I liked it was because it was actually a good match. What I didn't like about it was, of course, the spots were a little more on the dangerous side. And I know that Chris Jericho and Eddie Kingston can handle it, but it was it was just like, whoa, whoa, let's slow down a little bit because right. this was the curtain jerker. Maybe maybe you're sitting there saying this was not entirely necessary. Right. I can see that. Um, this was awesome. This was, again, this was my favorite match of the night. I'm going to have to agree with you. Um, he was like, oh, well, what about this blading? But this one made sense. And it wasn't until much later in the match either. Right. Moxley just bled a lot. Mm -hmm. That was it. And also, Brian Danielson is a very 
close up fighter. So of course he's going to get covered in somebody else's blood because he's like doing grapples and stuff against a bloody guy. You don't think that's going to get smeared it on was, you? It was, like it was two a minutes? classic wrestling match, and that's right. what I wanted. But, but also, John, but, John Moxley is not known for his classic wrestling but, matches. But, but also, what I really liked about this, it wasn't just a classic match. It was a brutal match. It was. They, they fought each other. Yeah, this was a fight. Did. This and, was this was a brawler match and a technical submission match. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I really enjoyed the, the whole experience of this match. I like this match. I know you don't like spot fest matches. This was a spot fest. It was the young bucks are obviously they're they're the spot fest queens. The queens. And you know, you got Red Dragon who would be a great if it was just Red Dragon and Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, I would have loved this match. I don't know why the Young Bucks were added to this match. I, I feel like I feel like it was kind of unnecessary. It was very unnecessary. Now, have also now, the way that this match just set itself up was just terrible. Too. Right now, here's what I would have done. I would have done Red Dragon versus Jurassic Express for the titles. Young Bucks come out, pretend like they're going to help Red Dragon, but yet screw right. them. Then have the and then have the Young Bucks Red Dragon match at double or nothing because we all know what the real rivalry is. The real rivalry has right. nothing to do with Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, and, and that's not where it should be because once again, this is a title match. The titles should be the main focus, but they, and they were not, and that's a bad thing. I mean, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus were just there. And, I feel like they were just there, right? And, and the real rivalry was just Red that, Dragon, the, Young Bucks. Despite, and also the Jurassic Express shined in this match. I thought they did the best they of did. it. They did, but it, but it was distracting to have the rivalry between the Young Bucks and Red Dragon take place at the same time. I can, I can agree with because that. Because it took away from Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. I can agree. I can 100% agree with that. 100%. Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus should have had their own match with somebody else. Yep. This should have been on the pre-show. I don't know why this Absolutely. wasn't. Absolutely. This should have been on the pre-show, or have Sammy Guevara defend the title against somebody. But this was well. He, here's the thing about this match: was it was it, again? It was just like a sleeper before the main events. Right. I mean, that legitimately what it was. I just don't like sleepers. It's just like it doesn't make any sense to me. It's like trios, whatever. When it was so random. When when in the hell was a n- n- tornado trio a no disqualification? I've never heard that. Well, it's a tornado. It's a tornado tag match. It's a tornado tag match, but that doesn't mean pillar and plunder. It's still one team against another team. There's nothing there about no disqualifications. But that's a tornado match. There are no disqualifications in tornado match. I've never seen that. You've never you've never seen this tor- again. Not that I'm not that I'm personally aware okay. of. So tornado matches do not have disqualifications because it's every man, you know, it's it's just one team against the other team. There's no rules. Okay. Um again, I understand I understand the premise of the match, but you know, here's yet another thing I want to talk about really quick too, while we're here. Is I felt like the 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 promos or the packages for a lot of these matches were not very well thought out. No, I don't think so either. I one hundred percent agree like with you. If there if there's one thing that I can compliment the WWE on is that they do a very good job um, um, presenting a package for a, a match. A, a, AW a, used to be really good, but the, they're getting they're some, getting they're for, getting a little sloppy with it. For for some reason. This particular pay per views packages for matches was weak. It was so bad. I can agree with that. I I, I 100% agree so, with that. So so the point, the reason I want to bring it up now is because I didn't see the reason for this match. Now, are Darby Allen and Sting like the enemies of the Hardy Andrade family office? Yes. Um, why are Andrade and Matt Hardy working together now? Like, like, what's what's the arc? So the arc right now is that Hardy, the Hardy family office had a have a working relationship with Andrade, which is why it's now A H F O because they had the working relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, Darby Al or um, Darby Allen and Andrade have been having a rivalry. 
and with Sammy Guevara involved in some way, shape, or form. I kind of wish they talked about the rivalry or the tension between Guevara and Darby Allen right. more. And also, why were Dar or, um, Isaiah Cassidy and Sammy Guevara, who's a champion, why are they taking a backseat? And and why is Andre Lidolo not with the House of Black? Like, has he ever been part of House of Black? No. Oh, he's, okay. he's, he's never been House of Black. Mm. Well, no, he was um he was tagging with them when they were in that rivalry, but he was never officially a member of the House of Black. Well, see, and that's not a thing. Is that I want to know what the arc is like now. They 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 put them together because there was the tie-in between uh, Queen Zelina. Because that was the talk of the town, right? At that but, time, but you know, like, like the point being is that I wanted a little bit more information, right? Of of a of a novice who's watching this show, uh, I, I, I I I almost expected more information. I was surprised there were three matches in the pre-show, right? And that kind of sucked, actually. Um, once again, this match should have been in the pre-show, or yeah. it shouldn't have existed at all because they had maybe what two weeks of. Promo on this. Ty, Ty Conti and Jay Cargill are not ready to carry a match. No, neither one of them are. Not in a single bit. At least Jade Cargill has the excuse of being inexperienced. Ty right. Conti's been doing this for, to my knowledge, at the very least, more than five years. She should have known this, but yet she was having a struggle on carrying this match. And it's, I don't think it was Jade's fault. I think a lot of this was Ty's fault. Mm -hmm. Just, it, was, it was a sloppy match. It was a very sloppy match. It made no sense. Why are they facing each other out of fucking nowhere? Right. Where, like, what the fuck? It just doesn't make any sense. I would have either had this on the pre-show or had it zero. Not right. at all. Now, this should have been on the main show. It I, should have been, yes. Absolutely. I would have replaced the Hardy Family Office match with this match because this match at least has a rivalry that you kind of understood. I understood it, yeah. I know there's a rivalry with uh, the Death Triangle and with the House of Black. Right. I understand that there is something going on. And, and with and with Phoenix injured right now, they I think Eric Redbeard. Eric, Eric Redbeard, which would have just, yeah. I this, think they, this should have been. They, they should have waited until um, right. uh, Revolution to right. say, hey, it's Eric Redbeard, right. the surprise person. That would have been cool. And I think that would have been a big pop on a show like this. Um, and they actually did have a pretty okay match. I really enjoyed it. And they definitely wrestled a pay-per-view match on a pre-show. Again, again, the match went too long. Yep. It should have been cut at least by 10 minutes. It should have been cut by 10 minutes, and it should have been on the regular show. It, it, the reason why it was on here, I will never know. This, it this, was, this match was terrible. It wasn't terrible. It, it was... was it wasn't good, but it wasn't terrible. It was average. It was average. Um, there was at least a rivalry with it, but they Again, had they they you got, they had, you got, you got two gals who cannot carry a match. By they themselves. had they had a better match a couple of weeks ago when this rivalry started than this match. And that's the thing. They actually did have a good match on Dynamite. Um, I think it was during a TBS Champion Qualifier tournament match. Yeah, and 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 Ty, I mean Layla. Why why with the Russian colors? I'm not going to explain it to you. I know why, but she's I not. She is she is not portraying a Russian. But but the the the, the point is is that. You should be wary about wearing Russian colors because of the association with the fact that there is a legitimate now, if, invasion if, if, going now, on. Now, if she was like fucking Nikolai Volkov and being a Russian sympathizer, I can understand that. I didn't see a whole lot of complaining on social media I didn't see a lot about of her here. About you know why? Because she's not trying to portray a Russian. I understand. She's just Russian. I it's understand. Like, the, but the colors, though, with Masha Slamovich as an example, she's portraying a Russian. Mm -hmm. But Layla Hirsch is not. Right. She just she's just a wrestler who I, happens to be Russian. But uh, but I I kind of would have I kind of would have put off the colors for at least a while. Maybe do like all black ears. Right. Thing. Exactly. She was, because she's a heel already. Right. 
I would have done something a little bit different. Or if she actually supports Ukraine, why not do Ukrainian colors as a defiant sort of thing? That'd be cool. But, but the point is, is that I felt like, based on current geopolitical situations, it was a little bad taste. Just, heel heat? It would have been a little. It would have been a little much if she was trying to get heel heat. Yeah, I'm like, do you want her to get killed? That's like that's like um that's like that's like if Alexander Rusev was right. having the big Russian flag flowing down right now, right. that probably wouldn't have been a good idea. Or a lot of giving thanks and praise to Vladimir Putin, that probably would not be a really good idea right now. Right. Anyway, um, I th- I'll be honest with you, I think this should have been on the main show. Really, Hook? Yep. No. Yep. Nope. Um, I think at least zero percent. If this was a sleeper match, this would have been this, a better. This would have been a better sleeper match than the AEW Women's Champion. This would have been a better sleeper match than maybe half of the fucking dog collar match. It doesn't have to be long. It just has to be there. This was the only perfect match for the buy-in. Really? I thought the other. I mean. I don't know. I think I think there were some matches that the, the were on the women's show that should have been on the buy-in and vice versa. And this is one of them where I'm saying, if this was not, this should have been the curtain jerker. Instead, of, instead of Jericho Kingston, this should have been the curtain jerker. Maybe, but again, you, you, again, you get you get you get rid of the TBS championship match and you get rid of the Hardly Family Office match and you put in a shorter House of Black versus Death Triangle match and this match. And you have a much better constructed pay per view. I don't know. It's a little hard to sell because this one, but the thing is, this one did have a rivalry. They actually explained it really well. And I thought, to be honest with you, I, I, I did enjoy this match. I, I thought it was fine. And then, well, it's not the end. Let's talk about the face of the revolution, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, I wouldn't have done anything different. I think everybody was exactly where they were supposed to be. I enjoyed the match itself, and I think they actually put over a couple of different people within the structure of the match. It, here's the thing, is that we talked about Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy's act is getting a little old. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of like New Day. New Day is great, but I'm so a, sick of the New Day. Yeah, they're, they're a little old. Um, and what does Orange Cassidy have outside of, like, being Orange Cassidy? Here's the thing. I would love to see an evolution of him as a character. Orange, Orange Cassidy actually wrestled as a masked luchador. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. When he, when he was in Chikara, he wrestled as a luchador. He's actually, he's actually a very, very good wrestler. He just... Found this gimmick and it works. Well, it worked. It worked. Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm kind of in the same boat. Uh, Orange Cassidy for me, it's just, it's like, eh. Whatever. It was fun. It was fine. Maybe if he did something like that but was a heel, mm-hmm. that might be kind of interesting. Um, and then, of course, you got Keith Lee. You got Wardlow. You got Hobbs. They, they kind of jerked them off as the big guys because they were the big huge guys and then people and then people are like well, hating on WWE well. for saying oh they like to promote big guys well AEW is doing the same fucking thing well the uh, I mean because they're like oh man well Keith Lee is just like the guy f- coming from WWE right Powerhouse Hobbs and Wardlow just have that sort of charisma that makes them really popular right and now. that's why one of them won was because Wardlow is a they're they're not they're not promoting Powerhouse Hobbs and Wardlow because they're just big. Right. They're, there's a lot more to Wardlow and Powerhouse Hobbs. There is. They and, just they and, just and they Wardlow, just happen to be young and big. Right. That's exactly. it. Exactly. But but they're promoting them like oh they're the big guys they're the huge guys. They like, are the whatever. big guys. They are the huge guys. But they're also good. That's the thing. Right. It's, this is not a Lex Luger situation. Right. They're not bad wrestlers. Right. They have charisma. They have presence. They're just they're just wrestlers who happen to be big. They're not big right. guys who are made as wrestlers. Right. And then you got Christian, and then you got uh, Christian. Christian was there to lead the match because he, was, he had yes. the experience. And then Ricky Starks was there because they wanted more people on the Team Taz Ricky, heels. Ricky Austin Theory. Yes, basically. <laughs> they they like they like to jerk him off. And Orange Cassidy was there because Orange Cassidy. Albeit his act getting kind of stale for me, he's still popular. 
Yeah. So they wanted him at least on there to get that pop in every single match. I understand right. why. I do. I'm, I'm not going to be too nitpicky about right. it personally. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have changed anybody out of the face of the Revolution ladder match, and I would have, I would have done a surprise maybe. I, I, I give it a thumbs down. I gave it a thumbs in mill. Um, but I would have. That's probably what I would have done. Um, overall, um, I did enjoy the pay per view. I did. Um, it was kind of Rebel, long. Revolution. Okay. Here's it was. Thing. It was a little long. People, people are saying, "Oh my God, it's the greatest thing of all time!" Right? It's not. One hundred percent. This, this, this pay per view. Because I'm starting to understand the formula of AEW is now starting to become old. No, I've I've seen AEW do amazing things. And what about the debut with Brian Danielson and Adam Cole? That was a much different pay per view. I enjoyed that one a lot more by than a mile. This one. No, people are enjoying this one a lot more. Really? Mm-hmm. Are they stupid? No, they are. But anyways, the point being is that AEW has found its formula, and, and I have found the AEW formula. And there, therefore, I will now start to be a lot more critical of the AEW formula because it is AEW formula. I want AEW to continue to surprise me like they, they have always done. And I want – I don't want predictability. Can we, can we also put the fucking pay-per-views on Saturday again? Yeah, like, seriously. come on. I, like, I understand Sunday pay-per-views and whatever, but for God's sake – don't don't put on a five hour whatever. It's so annoying. WWE's at least been good about keeping it down really short, mm-hmm. to where it, they they at least end it at like seven thirty instead of nine. But beggars can't be choosers. Ugh. Anyways, Revolution is it was pretty average for me. I'm gonna give it a thumbs. I'm I liked it more than I didn't. I'll give it a thumbs up, but that's being nice. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's just it's AEW is predictable now. Yep, that's so, it. Right. So, uh, peanut gallery. What are we talking about next week? We're not sure. To be determined. To be determined. We'll let you guys know. But if you did enjoy this, remember to like, follow, subscribe, uh, share with all your friends, become a patron. There's gonna be a link tree down below. Check everything out. And as always, be majestic. <laughs>